December 18, 1974. Dearest Elizabeth, now that Caroline is back fresh from seeing you and Cambridge and everyone, I feel almost as if I had made the trip myself and talked to you at some length. This letter is difficult because if I don't pay attention, my most pressing news will be Caroline's trip. It's a terrific thing to have house and school settled and know we'll be together, no three or four months that could have been born, perhaps, because they had to be. My suggestions for the end of your poem must have been troublesome. I think I've spent more futile hours trying to perfect something satisfactory, always pressing and invisible, the unimagined perfect lines or ending, for there it usually falls. Often I've given up and wondered why I ever found fault. There are the experiences we haven't had, working in a spool factory, etc., and can't imagine. And there are others, like the end of Lycidas, where all the experience is easily ours, but we can't turn to it or find the right sound. I've just spent a week or more on three lines, which finally ended in changing the position of two words. I did other things. I hope you won't bother anymore. You were probably right all along. I think about getting things right a lot when I haven't enough to make it matter. And often there is sprawl that cannot be arranged. We seem to be near our finish, so near that the final, the perfect, etc., is forbidden us, not even in the game. I see us still when we first met, both at Randall's and then for a couple of years later. I see you as rather tall, long brown haired, shy but full of description and anecdotes, as now. I was brown haired and 30, I guess, and I don't know what. I was largely invisible to myself and nothing I knew how to look at. But the fact is we were swimming in our young age with the water coming down on us and we were gulping. I can't go on. It is better now, only there's a steel cord stretched tense at about arm's length above us. And what we look forward to must be accompanied by our less grace and strength. Well, no more, dear Cire. I wonder if Christians believing in immortality saw their lives as less circular. Just had a letter from Peter Taylor. He writes that all his letters begin by philosophizing and end with trivia. I think he meant he felt at home with trivia. We are getting ready for Christmas, two families in our house, each with four children. It's like Aunt Sarah's family Thanksgivings. Unlike her, none of us can make audible feast speeches. Give my best to Alice. Caroline sends love. Love, Cal. January 16th, 1975. Dearest Cal, I think I sent you a postcard from Florida, but did I really? Anyway, I had a wonderful time there. Went on a three-day sailing trip with old friends, went to a marvelous wildlife sanctuary, went swimming almost every day, got very tan, and so on and came back feeling much, much better than when I left bleak Boston. I just got my mail yesterday, and it included a letter from you dated December 18th. I left December 27th. It's odd I didn't get it before I left. But no, I suppose not. The Christmas mail. Now, I have just talked to Frank, who says he talked to you and that you may get here before you get this. Well, I'll proceed with it anyway. Frank says that you have been having arthritis in your back, between the shoulders. I'm sorry to hear that. I have it rather badly, too, and a touch of it in that spot, although my hands are the worst. The only thing for it is aspirin in huge doses. I am now going to be very impertinent and aggressive. Please, please don't talk about old age so much, my dear old friend. You are giving me the creeps. The thing Lotta admired so much about us North Americans was our determined youthfulness and energy, our never say dyness. And I think she was right. In Florida, my hostess's sister had recently married again at the age of 76 for the third time. Her second marriage had been at 67. And she and her husband, also 76, went walking miles on the beach every day, hand in hand, as happy as clams, apparently, and I loved it. 
a very plump, pretty, sweet lady, as naive as a very small child. Of course, it's different for a writer I know. Of course I know. Nevertheless, in spite of aches and pains, I really don't feel very much different than I did at 35. And I certainly am a great deal happier most of the time. This in spite of the giant oil tankers parading across my view every day. I just won't feel ancient. I wish Auden hadn't gone on about it so his last years. And I hope you won't. However, Cal, dear, maybe your memory is failing. Never, never was I tall, as you wrote remembering me. I was always five feet four and a quarter inches, now shrunk to five foot four inches. The only time I've ever felt tall was in Brazil. And I never had long brown hair, either. It started turning gray when I was 23 or 24 and probably was already somewhat grizzled when I first met you. I tried putting it up for a very brief period because I like long hair, but it never got even to my shoulders and is always so intractable that I gave that up within a month or so. I think you must be seeing someone else. <laughs> what I remember about that meeting is your dishevelment, your lovely curly hair, and how we talked about a Picasso show then on in New York, and we agreed about the Antibes pictures of fishing, etc. And how much I liked you after having been almost too scared to go, and how Randall and his wife threw sofa pillows at each other. And Kitten, of course, Kitten. You were also rather dirty, which I rather liked too. And your stories about the cellar room you were living in and how the neighbors drank all night and when they got too rowdy, one of them would say, remember the boy, meaning you. Well, I think I'll have to write my memoirs just to set things straight. It will be nice to see you. Caroline and I had a real nice visit, as they say in Florida, and I'm looking forward to seeing her again. Alice is at BU Business School, poor dear and will soon be coming for dinner after her class on taxes, which she insists she loves. <laughs> so, I must stop and slice some green beans. See you later, alligator, as they also do say in Florida. With love, Elizabeth.